Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Author of the book, The Miracle of the August Snow, Claudia Kangela McAdam back on the show. Hello, Claudia. Good morning, John. Lovely to be with you. This is a great story. I mean, it's it's. I, I take a group to, to Rome every year. This is one of the highlights of the stories, at least for me, that I get to tell, because uh, what a miracle. Can you take us all the way back? All right. It's August 5th, 358. What do we need to know about this miracle? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll outline the book a little bit, yeah. and then we can get into the miracle in particular. So this is a chapter book, 72 pages. It's for early, younger readers, and, you know, 12 chapters, easy to read. But in my story, which is historical fiction mm-hmm. based on this legend of this miraculous snowfall, it's a hot and humid day in August in the year 358 in Rome. And my main characters are twin boys, Ignatius and Paulus. And they and their parents live and work in the home of a wealthy Christian couple, Giovanni and Julia. And the brothers, they stand together when they're teased by the neighbor boys. But when the heat rises, so do tempers. And these twins quarrel, and a wedge is driven between them. It doesn't seem like anything will be able to bring them back together. Mm. And it might take a miracle to cool things down. And then on the hottest night of the year... The Virgin Mary answers a long-time prayer of Giovanni and Julia with a surprising miracle, a snowfall in summer. And the Blessed Mother makes a request that Ignatius and Paulus can help fulfill, but only if they put their disagreements behind them and work together. So that's the outline of the story. That's pretty cool. I like how you did that. I like how you did that. Now let's go to the miracle, because I... You know, there's, there's, uh, this is a big story. I mean, in our history, I, we have one of the four major basilicas, really, that is a part of this story as well in Rome. It is. The, the legend goes that this wealthy couple, Giovanni, and we don't know his wife's name. Mm-hmm. I've given her the name Julia in this book. But they wanted, they didn't have children, and they wanted to leave their wealth to the church in some way that would bolster the faith. And they weren't sure what would be the best way to do that. So they, they prayed to the Blessed Mother, and then on the night of August 4th and August 5th, they each had the same vision or dream. Hmm. And on that night, the Pope, Pope Liberius, also had the exact same apparition. And all three of them saw the Blessed Mother who said, in the morning, you will find snow on the location of where I would like to have a church built in my honor. So, of course, the snow in August in Rome, what? Yeah. <laughs> so they, they wake up in the morning, and, and there is snow on the Escaline Hill, and the Pope says, let's mark this space, you know, let's map it out, and let's build a, a church here, and Giovanni and Julia fund that. Of course, it takes years to be built, sure. but that is, that's the, the first and largest uh, church dedicated to the Blessed Mother in our history. It's and the most beautiful, I think. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, am I missing something? Uh, 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 you know, go ahead. What I love about this church is not only the legend of how it's established, and by the way, on the Feast of the Dedication of the Basilica, which is August 5th, mm-hmm. at that church in Rome, they drop white rose petals from the ceiling and that flutter down onto the people as a symbol of that snowfall. And housed in that basilica are a relic from the manger in Bethlehem where Jesus was laid. Um, the ceiling of that basilica is lined with the first gold mm. that Christopher Columbus brought back from the Americas. He brought the gold back to Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain, and the Pope at the time, Alexander the Sixth, he was from Spain. So they gave him the gold, and the gold lines the ceiling of that basilica. Uh, there's, there's so many wonderful things there. Um, Ignatius of Loyola celebrated his first Mass. Yeah. Uh, Pope Pius V the, the prayed the Rosary that won the Battle of Lepanto there on August 7, 1571. And then the day after being elected Pope, Pope Francis made a surprise visit to this church to pray and bring flowers to Our Lady. And he has requested that when he dies, he will not be buried at St. Peter's, but he wants to be buried at this church. Where well, where did great, that come from? Country. Do we know that about the Holy Father? Because not only does he want to be buried at St. Mary Major, um, or was this the first place he went when he was elected Pope, but he goes before every international travel. Uh, yeah, he, and and, and he, upon his return. Yeah, upon his return, and oftentimes he'll give flowers or something to Our Lady, but um, he sits right in front. It's, it's really a, a powerful moment when I'm there. 
to think like this is right where the the vicar of Jesus Christ prays every time he he leaves the country and comes back. It's incredible. It is. He he has a special connection to that church, and um, it, it means a lot to him, and it means a lot to the, the Universal Church. So oh. we have a you know a feast dedicated to it. Yeah, really, really interesting stuff. So people are going to be able to find in this book the real, the real legend, right? I mean, you, you kind of, yes. yeah, you you kind of have a story around it, but you you really want to paint the picture here of what actually happened, right? The, the real legend—that's the the crux of the story. What's fun about a chapter book? You know, I've written picture books, I've written young adult biblical historical fiction novels. This is my first chapter book, mm. so it's it's a shorter work, but it's long enough to weave in several different storylines to kind of make it interesting for kids to keep reading. It's not just a recitation of, here's this miracle that happened, and here's the result, and blah, blah, blah. But it's an interesting story that, that brings this miracle into it. And these young boys, how they're present for this snowfall, and, and they're um, charged with actually faking out the area where the snow has fallen. So that's their role in this. But it's a, it's a fun way to kind of expand the story, but still to get the nuts and bolts of it down. Why why share this story for you? You know, every every August 5th when I'm at Mass and we're celebrating the dedication of this basilica, mm-hmm. and I know about the white rose petals falling down during Mass, I, I just am intrigued by the story and by the physical structure itself. And I thought, you know, people need to know more about these beautiful gems that we have in our faith all throughout history. Yeah. And this was just one that really attracted me, and I dove in and, and thought it would be a fun story to write. It's pretty awesome, uh, Claudia. What's next for you? Another book coming out next year. I was blessed to have three picture books out this year from three different publishers. So I, it's been a busy season for me. But uh, I keep writing and hoping that Catholic publishers like it and my work enough to pick it up and publish it. Is that all you do is write? My goodness. That's my, that, well, that is my career. That is my job. Yeah. You but come out with so like many books, life. and they're good. They're really good. You've done, go ahead. Thanks be, thanks be to God. I, it's not my own work. It's, it's his. If he wants it to be successful, he, he takes it and has a hand in it. Yeah, I was really, I'm really impressed by it. Um, all right. Where can people go to find your work, support you? We want as many people as possible to be able to, um, to pick up these books. They're good. You can get the book from the Our Sunday Visitor catalog, so it's osdcatholicbookstore.com. Of course, your local Catholic religious goods store, maybe a parish has a gift shop. If they don't have this book, they can get it. It's called The Miracle of the August Snow. And I offer resources, free resources for this book, a discussion and activities guide at my website, claudiamcadam.com. You can see a book trailer there and get information about all my other stuff, too. ClaudiaMcAdam.com, friends, is where you can go. And, again, Divine Treasures, if they don't have a book, they will certainly order it for you. God bless you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. God bless you and all your listeners. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.